Hi everyone, today I am going to be mounting my flight stick setup for Elite Dangerous in VR onto the arms of this chair. So I bought this chair specifically for this purpose. It's kind of a burner chair, but it does have the type of arm that you need to mount these flight sticks. Because the mount that I'm using is this clamp mount, usually used to attach monitors to poles, but in this case we're going to attach the clamp to the arm and we're going to put the throttle on the mount part. So, because of that, I wasn't able to use my old chair. As you can see, this chair has the arms where the end kind of comes out here and you can mount stuff onto it. And this chair just has arms that are in the center of the arm and the arm extends on both sides. I tried mounting it on this chair and it did not work because it doesn't extend out long enough. Uh, now this chair that I got is not perfect. It's not the optimal chair for this setup. I, I learned that when I was mounting the joystick. So as you can see, the joystick is a little bit elevated above the chair. And that is because the chair's arms end at a pretty steep angle. So if you're looking for a chair for this, you're probably going to want to find one that is a little bit more rounded in terms of where the arms end, because when you have it at this angle, this sharp angle, and you put the mounts on, let me show you real quick. So when you put the mount on, if you want it to be down here so it's not elevated and so you can rest your arm and use the joystick then it's going to be at an angle, which kind of sucks. And if you want it to be flat, so it's not an angle, you're going to have to put it up here. And as a result, your joystick is going to be a little elevated like this, but that's okay. It really does not make a huge difference. I can still use it just fine. And the reason I got a medium back chair is because I'm making this setup for VR. And in VR, you want to have the cord of your headset going behind the chair and this also lets you have maximum head movement, which is pretty useful in Elite Dangerous, which is a space flight simulator where you tend to be looking around a lot in combat. So let's get started on setting up this mount. When the mount comes, the default orientation is actually wrong. So you're going to have to open that up and change it. Let me show you what to do for that. But first, let me just go over some of the tools you're going to need. So you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver. It's one of the tools that are not included. You're going to need a pair of scissors. And then uh, this hex key and this wrench are also needed, but they come with the mounts. Now, my mount is already on the proper orientation. I already set it, but what you're going to want to do is use the wrench to take, take off this nut, and you're going to want to use the, whoops, the screwdriver to unscrew these screws and that's gonna reveal this little wheel under there and you just turn it put it back on there and then it should be properly oriented so that you can mount it like this and it'll have a flat surface for the joystick or throttle once you lift it up and then the other thing you want to do is you want to pop off the little plastic cover that is covering this this specific nut okay so it comes with these plastic covers like this and this and this and they can just be ripped off just have to put a little bit of force into it and then you're going to want to take this and make sure that everything is aligned properly that the mount is pushed basically as far as it can go so it makes kind of like a 90 degree angle here and then tighten this nut as much as you can so that your mount does not move at all tightened it the wrong way, okay, loosened it so that your mount does not move at all when you're using the joystick or throttle once you've done all that you are ready to attach the mount to the arms of your computer and it uses a pretty simple clamping system so go ahead and just put it on here and don't worry about the placement right off the bat. Just, just kind of loosely screw these large screws into it to hold the two pieces of the clamp together. Now, 
once you have the two screws lightly screwed in here, and this thing can hold together on its own, then you can start moving it around and trying to find out where is the optimal position on my arm for me to mount my throttle or joystick. And it might help to have it on hand so you can kind of put it there and adjust it as needed. I already know that I have to mount it fairly high up on the arm if I want it to be a level mount. So let's just try and line it up with my other mount. And that'll be that. Okay, so once you're ready to mount, you're in the correct position. Go ahead and tighten these screws even further using just your fingers. Once you get them tight enough where you can't really push them in anymore, you're going to need the hex key or allen key to really get them in there. And by the way, these clamps, they come with some rubber protectors on the inside of the clamps. You may want to remove those if you intend for your clamp to dig into your arms, your chair's arms, that is. Uh, if you would rather protect your chair, <laughs> then go ahead and leave the rubber protectors on there. Okay, so I'm using the Allen wrench now to tighten these even further. And you do want to tighten them quite a bit because you don't want your setup to be moving around at all. The other thing to do is make sure that both sides are tightened evenly. Or else your throttle or joystick is going to end up lopsided. Oops. Now, I already put Velcro on top of this mount, but that is your next step, is that you're going to want to put some Velcro on here. And now this has to be industrial strength Velcro, not just your run-of-the-mill Velcro, because you're going to be attaching a somewhat heavy peripheral to it, and you're going to be yanking it around and stuff like that. And if you use regular Velcro, it's just going to fly off, and you're going to drop it on the floor. And it's going to break and you'll have to play Elite Dangerous with an Xbox controller. So, use industrial strength Velcro, please. Okay. So, it's on there pretty tight now. Doesn't seem to be moving. And I actually already put the Velcro on here, but what you're gonna wanna do is take two strips of industrial Velcro Stick them together and line them up. Now you don't actually have to stick them together. You can just lay them on top of each other like this and then just put it down on the arm here. Grab your scissors and cut around the edges just to make sure that it fits on there. I'm not gonna do it with this because this Velcro is for a different purpose. And you do want to cut two pieces of Velcro at a time, the fuzzy part and the sticky part, and to actually stick, the, to actually stick them onto the mount and onto the bottom of your throttle and joystick, you're gonna need to remove this clear layer on the back, which will expose a sticky surface that you can use to stick the Velcro to things. And it's always a pain in the ass removing this Goddamn little plastic thing. Okay, I finally got the sticky stuff off the Velcro, or the clear stuff off the Velcro to expose the sticky stuff. Now I'm gonna stick it to the bottom of my throttle. I'm using an X52 SciTech Pro throttle, um, but on this model, you're gonna to wanna to align the bottom of the Velcro with these little holes here, and with uh, this hole in particular for the other side. So I'm gonna do that. And of course, you want it centered. Flip it around because this side is straighter. Makes it 
easier to align properly. Okay, there's one strip of Velcro. Let's put the other strip of Velcro on here. And once you're all Velcroed up, you're ready to mount. So here we go. Just make sure that your Velcro is aligned with the Velcro on your mount. And then go ahead and put it down there. And voila, now I have a chair that is mounted with a flight stick and throttle. And as you can see, uh, the only thing that really moves around here is the actual arms on the chair. <laughs> I attached them as tight as possible, but uh, it's kind of a cheap chair. But yeah, the Velcro holds up. I can give it a lot of abuse, probably more abuse than I'll be giving it in the game Elite Dangerous. I don't actually fly like this, but uh, everything is holding up fine. One of the last pieces of the puzzle here is going to be your external USB port. Now this is useful because if I were to just run this wire directly into my computer, then I would have a wire hanging well above the floor and I could potentially walk into it and trip and pull it out, etc. Because I am going to be wearing a VR headset while I'm using this thing and uh, I won't be able to see while I'm walking around my room. And I will be walking around my room because it's a thing you do in Elite Dangerous in VR. Okay, so I'm gonna put another strip of Velcro on the bottom of this. Ow. Hit myself in the head. Okay. Now, where did my thing go? My USB port, or my USB hub. I managed to get the uh, clear plastic out the those for ships easily this time. All right, found the USB hub sitting on the arm of my chair. So, and this also gives you the added benefit of being able to charge your phone under your chair if you really want to. Although I use a wireless charger, so probably won't be doing that. Just sticking this Velcro onto the bottom of the USB hub. Trying to make sure it's aligned properly. Not that it matters. Okay, so I've got my Velcro. And let's just slam it on there. Now let's take the USB and plug it in. And I'm also going to want to be plugging the two pieces together, the throttle and joystick. Where is that cord? My computer's freaking out about something right now. I can't deal with that. Okay. Here's the cord. So go ahead and Put this in here. And the other end in here. Okay. And there you have it, folks. Oh, wait, that actually looks pretty uh, freaking lame with all these cords. So you're going to want to do a little bit of cord management. I have this like IKEA cord management kit that I got a while ago. I had it sitting around. So I'm gonna to try to use these tiny little cord management brackets. I don't know if you can see it that well, but it's this little white thing that you can thread a cord through, and then it has sticky stuff on top of it. So you can stick it to stuff. So just go ahead and make sure your cords are all running properly along so you don't run into them while you're walking around in VR or just in general. And so the cord management things from the IKEA kit do actually work on this. So 
I will be putting that IKEA kit in the description as well. I believe I got it from Amazon. Well, I might have actually got it from IKEA. But I'll check. And with that, you can get your cords all running along the bottom. So nothing is sticking out there for you to kick or trip over or whatever. But you don't need to see the whole cord management process. I am just going to finish that up right now, plug this whole setup in, and then I'm going to jump into Elite Dangerous, try it out, and I will show you guys what that looks like. Okay everyone, here I am in Elite Dangerous and I'm using the new setup and it works very nice. So I'm looking at my joystick in the game and as you can see my arm is basically aligned with it. In fact, I'm happy to see that the joystick in game is slightly raised off of the dude's armrest, just like my setup, although I would still prefer to be able to completely rest my arm on here. Whoops. No, no, no. <laughs> And then, you know, same deal with the throttle here. So that's awesome. I also have the X52 Pro flight stick, and the thing about this flight stick is it's modeled after the flight stick in-game. So not only do I see the flight stick moving around, as I feel the buttons, I'm feeling <laughs> exactly what I'm seeing. I first got this flight stick, I was just feeling the buttons in VR just to get a, a handle on what the buttons feel like. And it really, really tripped me out that I was feeling the exact same thing that I'm feeling in-game, or that I'm looking at in-game. And then with the, uh, whoa, okay. <laughs> I've never experienced that because with my high back chair, I wasn't able to like lean backwards like this. So I guess I actually can lean through the chair and uh, yeah, that's cool. But this medium back chair, oh yeah. I've been running my cord along the side like I would usually do, but I can actually run it behind me now, which feels really nice, it's very freeing, and I can look all around. Pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. So yeah, uh, and just some closing thoughts on this whole process. One thing I realized when I was uh, plugging it into my computer, you don't actually need to have the... Um, USB hub. You can just get a, U a single USB extension cable and uh, that should do the trick. And, whoop, trying to turn on my lights here. <laughs> Not charge my frame shift drive. Oh, I forgot how to turn on my lights. Uh, so you don't need a USB hub. Just get a single USB extension cord and you can um, duct tape that to the bottom of your chair or whatever. You don't even need to to fasten it to the bottom of your chair. You can just run the USB cord from the joystick under the bottom of the chair and use uh, some sort of cord management system with that and then just have it drop down to the floor and connect with the USB extension cord there. And so if you want this set up but you don't want to deal with the joysticks being slightly raised off the armrests, which now that I'm using it actually is fine, I mean, it's still plenty comfortable. But I would suggest getting a different chair, or if you want to get this chair, you're going to have to get single joint mounts. Now they do have these exact mounts in a single joint variety. This is the double jointed mount, which means it raises up the HOTUS flight stick setup a little bit further than you would get from a single joint setup. The problem is the single joint setup is not on Amazon, it's not on any store that I could find online, it's only on eBay, and it's overpriced. So, um, yeah. I'm gonna put all this stuff on eBay, or sorry, I'm gonna put all this stuff in the description, and uh, you guys can buy it and check it out, although I just want to offer a disclaimer that this is not the optimal setup with this chair. I'm sure there's better chairs out, this for, out there for this setup, but this one does actually work pretty well, especially for a VR setup where you want a medium back chair like this. Anyways folks, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, I'm really glad that I got this whole thing set up. It's really sweet and really fun and really immersive having just like everything matched up in game. 
I mean, it was already awesome before, but now it's just like some next level, <laughs> some next level shit. I just need to get um, a butt kicker, which is like a little thing that vibrates. You put it under your chair and it vibrates when you get hit. I need to get a sub pack backpack, which is a little thin backpack you wear that uh, amplifies um, bass. So when I would boost my, there would be a bunch of bass and I would be able to feel it rumbling in my body. And then I need to get the uh, eTrim 4D headphones that Samsung is working on. And there are these headphones that shock your inner ear with little electrical shocks to stimulate your vestibular system and make you experience motion even though you're not moving. <laughs> so uh, then I will have the ultimate immersion set up in Elite Dangerous, but this is just the first step. So thank you for watching this. I had a lot of fun filming and I um, hope you guys had fun watching. Check out my channel if you're into virtual reality. I put out a ton of VR gameplay videos. Have a great day and goodbye. Oh no, I'm under attack now. Finish him! Oh no, 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 no. Not a good idea. Let's get out of here. Sometimes you gotta know when to give up. Through the tunnel. This is the tunnel I cleared earlier. My territory. Behind me? Nope. <laughs> Alright. It's a jump!